Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I wanted to touch on E46 M3 as sort of a follow-up video to our other video that we did, the cars we had in the shop that we were working on. This was one of the cars that was on the lift that I kind of walked by and said we were doing a manual swap and we were doing some other maintenance and stuff. I'm gonna take you through everything we did with this car and then I'll take you through kind of the maintenance and why the S54 is special and why it's important that certain maintenance items are done on these cars. There's always the big three doing the Vanos, doing the rod bearings and also doing the subframe reinforcement. We do those literally on a weekly basis here at the shop. We're always doing one of the three or a combination of the three on those different cars. This particular E46 M3 was sent from Kentucky. Guy had had some running issues that he wanted us to address and it mostly came down for the manual swap. This particular customer was super sensitive about what parts were being used for the manual swap. And from day one, the way that I always wanted to do the manual swap was with all genuine BMW parts, literally from the dealership. We order a parts list from the dealer. Everything's brand new OEM for BMW. It's the right way to do it. Nothing's aftermarket that we install, unless a customer sends us a short shifter, unless there's little things, but we went ahead and did the manual swap. He actually took the manual swap a little bit further. He did a manual steering wheel on the car, which I'll walk you through, which is not something everyone always does, but it's a cool thing because visually now the car is manual. There's really nothing that gives away that it was an SMG besides the VIN. To take you back a little bit about the S54 and the E46 M3, these motors have double Vanos, which is variable valve timing on the intake and the exhaust side of the motor. That actually comes over from the S50 B32 that was in the E36 M3 Euros. So this motor and that motor are very similar. It's something that needs to be looked after. It's a high pressure oil system, has a lot of parts and pieces. And so it's something that we regularly service, we regularly replace. These cars actually have solid lifters as well. So we do valve adjustments on the motors. We have another one right now that we're doing Venos unit on from Dr. Venos, which is a rebuilt, brand new rebuilt Venos unit. We did a cryo hub. They have a hub on the end of the cam that actually has some studs that break off and wear over time. What Dr. Vanos provides is they buy an OEM hub and then they cryo treat it, which makes it super strong. It's just one of those things you need to do with S54 to make it more robust. That's something that you can do when you pop the Vanos off. It has that hub accessible right there. We've actually had cars with a noisy motor and it was a tab from the hub that broke off and it was actually inside the motor. It was one of those things where we recommend it now on all of them. There's also some cam bolts that come loose that we also replace when we have the Vanos off. There's just a lot of bits and pieces and a lot of customers bring us cars that they don't know service history on or they know some things were done and some weren't done. We try to level up the maintenance to where it's gonna be reliable, it's gonna make the power and it's gonna be something that you can have pretty much forever. S54 is like a really special motor to me. We've put it in E30s, we put it in E36s. It's a really universal type size, it's a straight six and it makes good power, but it's really starting to creep up in cost in order to buy an S54, do all the maintenance that's required, rod bearings, Vanos unit, do a valve adjustment, reseal it. It's really up there in cost, but it's a really special motor and I'll always, it'll always be a special one to me because that's kind of when I got into doing these cars and modifying them, supercharging the motors and full bolt-ons and everything. But the car behind us, I mean, looks looks pretty stock, but it actually has a Turner Motorsport uh, CSL airbox. We did the active software, which is Alpha N based, and it makes about 330 horsepower to the wheels on the dyno. We actually just took it to the dyno for the customer before it leaves back to Kentucky. The Turner Motorsport box is a copy of the OEM CSL box. It has some changes on it. Um, it has a different snorkel design over here. The OE one has an actual snorkel that comes down into the bumper area and it actually has a flap that's controlled with the DME that opens and closes. It's a really neat thing on the OE CSLs. The OEM CSL E46 M3 is another car that is on my like list to collect. We, we actually can't bring them in the States yet. The thing about those cars is that they're SMG only. They did SMG too, because you know back in the day, SMG was like the latest state-of-the-art tech for these cars. SMG2, it's the, actually the second rendition. They actually had SMG1 and E36s, but SMG2 was only really able to be done on E46 M3s because of the technology with the ECU and the controllers that the ECU had inside. It had some crazy fast microprocessors. It's why we can tune the cars. It's why we can supercharge the stock mode it's why we can do so much with these that allowed it to have an SMG and SMG is actually has a clutch it has a standard manual clutch it's a manual gearbox but it's actually actuated with a hydraulic system so there is not a physical clutch pedal it's actuated and you control and you shift with either the paddles behind the steering wheel or you can manually shift it 
with the SMG knob. That's new tech for 2001. That was an epic thing. And a lot of people, I can remember when people were ordering the cars, they wanted SMG because that was the new thing. SMG was faster than manual cars. Over time, as SMG ages, it gets clunky, it gets inaccurate, and it leaves people stranded. So that's why we're doing so many manual swaps on E46 M3s. I like manual cars and I like manual E46 M3s, but a brand new SMG system, which we've done, we've replaced and put brand new pumps, brand new lines, everything in cars, it's cool. It's a neat system. I mean, it's not my favorite. I think it has its time and place. I think that if I had an, an OEM CSL, I'd probably leave it SMG. That was the edge of the tech then that kind of set its tone with the CSL. The other thing that I wanted to point out, car had a real dancing idle. At idle, it would bounce up and down like 900 to like 1500, the idle would move. And it was a constant issue for this customer. He had the, the box and stuff done at a shop in Kentucky ever since the box. And he had a bunch of maintenance and work done and they did a great job on the car. But there was always that idle issue and there was always kind of a running richness to the car. So one of the things we did was we retuned it with active. That was who I'm familiar with. I work with Carl down at Active Auto Work. He's OG, he's been doing this for 40 years, longer than me. And he knows what they're doing, especially with these boxes and all the race cars we build and race S54s and the E36 that we built and the E30 that we built. Those cars are all S54 and they all run the airbox on Alpha N. We ended up changing the tune to an active tune. We ended up checking over O2 sensors, checking over a lot of things. And what we found is that the O2 sensors, there's four of them, they actually had been swapped. Uh, when the car was worked on, I think they were taken apart and they were actually put in the wrong places on the OE headers. The car runs with those swapped, but it does that idle search. We were able to find the issue. We were able to fix the O2s. We actually put brand new O2 sensors in the car, retuned it, and that's when we made, uh, you know, three. I think it was 331 to the wheels on the dyno. But the car drives super strong, feels very fast. I think the customer is going to be super happy with it. I'll open the door. Again, we did the manual swap. It has the OE pedal. It has the OE uh, ZHP knob, which is an upgrade. And this is the brand new manual steering wheel that the customer did, which is a cool, neat detail that a lot of people really don't do. I thought that was a great upgrade uh, to the car. So a lot of times when we do manual swaps, there's a lot of other issues that we try to address while we have a transmission out. One of them is the drive shaft, the guibo, and the differential. We see a lot of drive shaft wear on SMG cars because of the force of the gear changes. We then see a lot of wear in the differential. So a lot of times when these cars come in, we end up doing a rebuilt drive shaft. We end up doing a diff. We normally use diffs online, which they do fully rebuilt OE differentials. These are awesome cars. They just need certain things. And it's important if you're gonna buy one of these cars that you know if the stuff was done or if you have an indie shop local to you that can do the modifications and do the maintenance so you know that you have that support. These cars need that support from PSI. They need the support from an indie shop. The other stuff I'll, I'll kind of touch on with these cars is the subframe. The subframes tear in these cars and it's because of the way the subframe mounts. They have vertical bolts that mount into the chassis and the chassis is horizontal and they flex. It flexes and it cracks. It's on every single one that we work on. The worst thing that I hear is, oh, I bought this car and the guy said he did a subframe inspection and my subframe is good. Guess what? You can't do a subframe inspection. You can shine a light and you can see if it's really bad, then the cracks will pass the subframe, but the physical subframe actually blocks access to see the damage on the body and everything. Subframe reinforcement is something that we do here a lot. We do, we have our own plates. We have the standard plates that some people do. We've done event spars before. That's kind of crazy and extreme. I have two fabricators on staff. We do these a lot. We do rod bearings a lot and we do Venus rebuilds and everything with these cars. These are cars we work on. There's, I think, four, I think four or five of them here now uh, that we're doing all of this stuff too. Yeah, so I talked about the Venus earlier. I talked about the subframe reinforcement. The other big part as part of the big three that everyone brings up are the bearings, the rod bearings. There are known issue on these cars. They were an issue in the early motors. They also are an issue in the later motors. We've seen it on all mileages. We've seen it in all conditions we've seen it in all climates it's one of those things where if you have one of these cars rod bearings needs to be done period there's no exception to that rule one of the things that i'll say about the rod bearings is is we use be bearings which are a special size and have a special coating we've been doing them since be started we're one of the original dealers and we use apr uh, rod bolts 
because those are easier to install and they're just much better quality than OE. Keep all that in stock, get all brand new oil pan gasket. We obviously do an oil change, you've drained the oil. It's one of those pieces that's just a peace of mind. Actually gonna do a breakdown of the big three, how we do it here at the shop, why it's important. I'll break down all the inside. Those are videos that are coming up soon. Please let me know any questions you guys have, any other videos you wanna see down in the comments. Make sure you like and subscribe to the page. Appreciate you tuning in and we'll see you next time.